I ask everybody to turn uh, in their Bibles to John chapter 5. The book of John chapter 5. And we will begin reading at verse 1 through verse 12. John chapter 5. Uh, and if I can uh, ask everybody to please stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, if, if you can, if not, you know, that's all good. <laughs> all right, John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 1 through 2. And when you get there, say amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to begin reading, but I'm going to drop out. So I want y'all to continue reading with me, okay? Out loud. So we're going to read verse 1 through verse 12, all right? Here we go. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Continue. Now, there is Jerusalem by the sheep, and he pooped. When he's called the Hebrew, he said that, having a five-sized porch. In this day, a great multitude of important folks, of men, men, wheat, and waiting for the account of the warrant. And for the angel went down a certain season into a pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, after the trouble of the water, was made the whole, whosoever disease he had. And a certain man was there with had an, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there a long time, in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. To the Jews, therefore, said unto him that that was uh, cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered unto them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Verse 12. And they asked him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? Mm. You may be seated. That was the last question that they asked the man. Who was it that gave you the ability to do what you couldn't do before? This is a very powerful passage of scripture. It is full of extreme truths and extreme revelations of how the hand of God comes to deliver his people. One of the things that I've come to realize about God is that God is a deliverer. This is important to understand because if we don't know him to be a deliverer, then we will not seek him when we need deliverance. The truth of the matter is, regardless of who you are, you need to be delivered from something. For the Bible tells us in Psalms that God sent his word and healed them from their destruction. The word there in that passage was personal. It's T-H-E-I-R, oh, yeah, T-H-E-I-R, which is personal because the truth of it is you have a personal thing that is trying to destroy you. Now, it may not be the same types of things that your neighbor may have, but the truth of the matter is there is some type of destructive thing that is trying to follow you, to lay hold of you and capture you. But the, inter the interesting thing about God is, though God understands the principle in that his children needs to be delivered from their enemy, he does not wait until his child is completely free to begin to start operating in their life or put them in a place of being used. Please follow me. The interesting thing is God will call you. He will touch you. But after he touches you, he says that I just gave you a piece of my reality. But the truth of it is I have more to give you. Just like with the woman with the issue of blood. She had an infirmity for 12 long years. But Jesus healed her from that one infirmity. 
but that was not it. After she had been healed from the infirmity, Jesus then, after she was touched by him, began to look for her. Because what God was wanting to do did not just stop by her receiving one touch. The truth of it is, when he came to the woman, he told her, now thy faith has made thee whole. I did not just come to touch one part of you, but the truth of it is, I came to put every broken piece in your life back together. Powerful stuff. In this passage of scripture, this is a picture of the true methods, true methods of God, of how he delivered. The, stories, the story opens up on a day that there was a feast in Jerusalem. This is why Jesus had come to Jerusalem, because there was a feast. I don't know if you remember the message that I ministered a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago about the feast that the king had prepared. And that any time that there is a feast in the kingdom, you have to know that that means that something good is on the way. The, this story opens up letting us know the first scene of the story is that there is a feast prepared. And because the feast was there, Jesus steps to the place because of the feast. I want you to understand that God has goodness for you. God has things that he wants you to taste that you really wouldn't believe. That goes beyond your comprehension, that goes beyond your thinking, that goes beyond everything that you have ever experienced. God has something good prepared for you. Trust me. In this passage of scripture, we have the porch and the pool. At the pool, there were five porches. In other words, at this pool, when the angel would come and trouble the water that was in the pool, the Bible said that the first person that would step into the troubled water would be healed. This is why at this place there were a lot of impotent, lame, and infirm people at this place because they knew that they had to be healed from something. Now, I want to just say this right quick. When God saved me, he, he touched me. He allowed me to know that he exists. But after that one touch, as I continued to walk with him, I began to see that there are things that were inside of me, that were still inside of me, that I knew I had to be delivered from. But the truth of the matter is, God is not intimidated with whatever problem or issue or obstacle that you may have. But the reality is, God has set up a source of deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. The people were all at the pool with their different specific types of infirmities. Laid there at the pool, waiting to be changed. The first thing that it shows me, number one, is that there were five porches. And just to give an example, just say if this was a big pool right here, if this carpet area was a pool, there would be five steps, like for instance, this, these steps is like a porch. So you have five different porches. So you had this one porch to get to the pool, to get to the pool. And then you got another porch right here. And then you got about two more on the other end. And you got another one on the side. Different methods to get into the place for your deliverance. Please follow me. This shows us one thing about God. How God is going to deliver you will be different than how you think you should be delivered. If you think that you can master God or think how 